Now, hello there. Diary entry for the 20th of November 2015. Now, it was quite a busy day today. A bit positive, slightly negative, depending on the way you see it. The majority was positive, so. No picky, thanks be glad. Now, yesterday on my way out, um, as I reported yesterday, on my way out of such weather, which was to get the, the, the certificate which obviously I got the wrong one or whatever but on the way out of doing that I was approached by a lady and uh, so some other woman that are sending other people up to a job open day okay now it was it was open day which is today for 11 o'clock in the morning right well she said half 12 then it brought back to 12 and then I got a text from them which she actually told me she would send the text and the text said half 12 half 11 sorry right so then okay so then i headed on to phoenix marketing that's the company that is doing the recruiting i.e the open day now i realized the last minute even though i had read the text fully and everything but i realized in the very last minute that i had to go in professional dress code i like, just couldn't wear anything like what i'm wearing here you know so i quickly put things on and then i headed on out I arrived at the business in question, which is at Phoenix Marketing, aka they're known as the Marketing Hub. Now maybe it's the, maybe there's just several other companies that is in there. I don't know. I didn't bother looking it up or whatever. Now, excuse me. Now when I arrived, there was a music, very informal. Now I was a bit peed off or pissed off, whatever you wanna call that, right? Then about a half hour of waiting on, which obviously is expected. With it any interviews or whatever we were treated to a presentation now i say we because we were actually brought in in the group so it was kind of a it was technically an open day but at the same time they were monitoring your performance all right or marking your performance whatever right and it was about two other people plus myself three and then a chinese one who is from france living in ireland is actually um she arrived slightly later now so we were we were treated to a presentation and then after we were required to fill out an assessment sheet which was technically a feedback on the whole system on the whole job the presentation etc etc right then we were to get feed feedback by close of business so then i got talking to one of the contestants which is our candidates or i think that'd be better with candidate outside the building and during the whole open day i got the automatic impression of a quick money making scheme all right it's just like in a few days there was an employee who works in the building in the company they were at the ideal home exhibition right and literally he got over two or three euro a day sorry he earned two thousand over two thousand euros or two grand is what they call it right now like i don't know the way it goes by commission that's all i can say so every time you sell a product or a service you act the company pays you extra on top of your basic income now regarding this i came back home on a cold now rainy afternoon being good. the reason i say now is because it was lovely going in going into the building obviously very cold but it starts raining just lightly when i came out you know so so then well i actually called into um what they call the place is supervising just to see if we can products i can buy there you know but then as it happens i obviously didn't have the cash with me so i didn't bother buying anything so i had on home so then i i was getting things ready like i was putting on my casual wear and doing whatever around hanging around so to speak when i got a call from the company now they were very quick which is a bit surprising you see there's a little bit of suspicion there you know as it happens i actually got great news in that i got the job now how to put that in simple english i actually did not expect in getting that job full stop all right but she like every other company majority companies i have been working my ass off for interviews and for whatnot 
I've never received, I've never gotten a job. Or you need more experience, you need this, you need that. Because this particular job I was going for, they didn't give a crap about your qualifications. Like my qualification is in computer science, software systems, you know? And yet, they didn't give a crap. Like there's a, one guy who I got talking to after the, his background is in environmental studies, excuse me, but I had. Then there was the, the woman who was with us as well. Not the Chinese one, the other one. She was with us as well and she, she has a degree in psychology, excuse me, something else. And then if she was to go into this particular thing, like, she'd be wasting, after wasting so many, what, months, years, whatever, you know? Or, it was probably years of studying for it. So, I don't know. So, that's why I didn't jump up and down for, and uh, for joy, you know? Now, I'll, that's great. However, how, how, uh, what's my, oh yeah, sorry. However, the reason I dance and, that's great. For joy, is because, although I get paid commission type, alright, so like, as I described, if you, uh, sell something, right, you then get paid extra on top of your income, well, supposedly income, right? But, social welfare, which I can easily tell them to stuff with, but the problem, the biggest being is the lack of knowledge on said on my part. Like there was a guy who had, as I said previously, who had a Bachelor of Science, I think it did, in Environmental Studies, etc. And the woman, I think it was Psychology, etc, etc. And yet they didn't give a, you know, flying monkeys about that. So I wasn't impressed at all, and like I said, uh, you, like they have a snooker table, they go on holidays, like the managing director of the company was actually on a plane for 25 times in this year alone and 2015 is not even finished, right? And yet she was, now obviously the majority was business, but they even showed holiday pics like, and I'm talking about like where you get drunk and she even said it like, literally the word drunk. I said, okay, you're, you're supposed to be representing a company yet. You're not doing a great job in terms of, or you can go drinking as well. So I said, yeah, okay, I think I'm gonna pass. Now, so then, while during the presentation, as you know, sometimes my mind just away, and I was thinking, I got all of um, in Tesco recently, and um, I had used some of it, but obviously the thing has to be finished in three days from the opening of the thing. Which today I imagine was the last day. So then, my auntie got me a salad, alright? It was very nice, by the way, mind you. So what I did was I decided to pour out the salad onto a big plate and stick the olives in, just mix it up with the olives, you know? Which is absolutely gorgeous and it was heaven. Fantastic. And obviously, not only was I thinking about this in the, what do you call it, in the interview or whatever you call it. I actually did it for my lunch after, was it, oh, the outhouse, I think. So then, so then, my sis came down to me just for a company and to look at TV, or not as much on TV, I mean download, sorry, to download stuff. But she was helping me to find Cry Cry. Speak in the hand there. Babies, alright? That's him now. But now, can you see him there? This little blue thing. That's actually a tear. Alright? As I was saying to my sister and to other people, it represents me completely wholeheartedly. I smile on the outside, but obviously this baby is actually showing his crime. But in reality, he's smiling like myself. <laughs> but you would notice if you knew me in person or if you came up to me, if you knew me personally, I should say, or if you came up to me up close, you see my eyes being watery, because of whatever's going on in my mind, or whatever. That's the way I would appear, constantly. So, I was looking for him, and, um, apparently, the bed being over there, alright, I was standing on the bed, and I just threw him, because he's like a frisbee, you know? Like so. You know, you get it? Great, cool. 
keep myself up. Quick tool in here still. Alright. Yeah, come on in. There. So then, eventually my sister and I found Cry Cry. He was literally underneath this, the stairs, like the, the chair. So with that said and done, I handed on to the altar for a bit of crack. Or as I said to Ali, Kyo log is crack. Akshakarang on Kyo la In English that means music and crack. But obviously minus music, of course, because, you know. Basically I was just saying, I was went there for a bit of crack and I was telling this to Ali, one of the patrons or whatever, you know. It was a bit bouncy bouncy. <laughs> you know. So I went there though to thank Bernard Profusi for just a wee chat, i.e. talk, aka my mental health last week. I told him of my distressing dream which you all have literally very gory details that I'm not going to go back over. And uh, of Romania, I should say, you know, and he will advise me like my sister and everything else, you know. Now although my sister knows a hell of a lot more obviously, because she's been with me through so thick and skin and literally like that, you know. But, you see, the difference between him and my sister is he wasn't in an orphanage where both my sister and I were, you know? So, obviously, so, what I'm trying to say here is would you need to get advice from a person who is not in your situation or who doesn't know, who is, was not in your circumstance, you know? So, I don't know, kind of, they say these days, for anyone to understand what you're going through, you have to be in that situation so that's where my sister fits in so yet why couldn't my mind say when you talk to your sister why can't she help well not help obviously she's helped you a lot more but what I'm going to say is why couldn't you get as I said about cry cry why couldn't you just simply dry away the tears because every night I was going to bed with floods of tears, my blankets getting wet and everyone with the amount of tears, you know? And yet, it still went. It still was crying constantly, you know? But then, since when I told Bernard of my dreams, which I only told him the surface of it to a certain degree, as it happens, I haven't had a dream, or distressing wise, not even, I don't think, not even any dream, come to think of it, at all. Since last week, which is when I told him. But they say, though, you should talk to a person you trust. That's all I'm saying. Be it my friend, my sis, whoever. Now, I also talked to my sister, and now Bernard. So, those are, and very well, he's kind of busy these days, so I hardly see the man, but generally it's Bernard and my sis. But mainly my sis, I would do a lot of talk on. Because she's also been in my situation and not quite a lot, you know. So moving on. So only the man upstairs, well, yeah, of course, being God in my case, you know. So what I'm trying to say is that I was able to relate to a person who was not in my situation. I'm still a bit fishy about that. So moving on. Excuse me. Look back in my lips, I don't know why, but... Right, moving on. So that said, I headed on up to mom and dad's for clarification purposes regarding the job. They obviously don't know anything about my dream, so I'm not going to bother telling them, because they. Firstly, Bernard doesn't understand in terms of the, the orphanage, because he wasn't there. Likewise, mom and dad. But where mom and dad and Bernard differ is mental health. They have no clue when it comes to mental health, because of the age, etc, etc, so. Obviously, I'm not going to ever tell them about my dreams, let alone Romani stuff, you know? Because they'd say, just move on or try and get over it. Not the best advice. So, moving on, I went up to them to for clarification purposes relating to the job. So, I told them, like the last time, that I had actually gotten the job of. Um, of um, this particular. A survey sales person, you know, and when they heard that I would be doing a lot of walking, because obviously, yeah, I have to do a hell of a lot of walking, so simply put, you, you would have to do um, a lot of walking, 
so we go into door to door etc etc so then uh, I was offered a job which I told him about the Phoenix marketing I was torn between telling social welfare to stuff it I was torn between telling them it you know with their disability payments etc etc or more so the treatment of my mom and of course my knowledge again see it goes back to my knowledge you know however once again my back and my now my knees were brought in because my knees tend to give up when I'm doing I have a lot of walking you know and of course my knowledge however once again my uh, I just said that as part of the job would, would be to go and sell the and make communicate commission sorry i.e. walk which over exerting doesn't have my knees at all so it is found in the end that uh, I just, just simply tell them to get lost but in the nice way so I'll be doing so in the next few hours well I'll probably when I get up after the video I'll be heading to bed and then getting for alienation now you know so then moving on we're looking at TV what the hell is that supposed to say I don't know show sure. no I'll think of what I'm trying to say there but anyway I'm looking at a travel series on the TV known as the Great Journey Railways Great British Journey Railways something like that right and I was admiring the tram is it just the uh, the presenter of the show Michael something from Britain is doing a railway journey from A to B in all of the European country you know I think he did one in America I'm not sure yet but he, so far he's done uh, many in the mainland Europe but I find you get to see a lot more the country or Europe or the country if you're actually on a train not on a plane because the plane is very high in the altitude for whatever reasons you know so I said yeah just get up there you know so then I said okay so then in terms of this when he was in Germany the presenter he was in Friedberg or Freiburg something like that and then he went up to Heidelberg and then he was off to Hanover Frankfurt I think first then Hanover and his destination was oh something like that I forgot I don't think it's Hanover or well, whatever it was but uh, my point being is I was admiring the trams which obviously brought great memories of my dad and I going up the trams or the cable car sorry I was admiring the trams and the cable car the tram being because we have one here in Dublin called Lewis which in English is light rail because that's exactly what it is light rail is a tram and the cable cars being when my dad and I were in Italy going up the cable cars up, up the mountain of course now I recognize the seating though in the trams like it's actually fabulous to see it so I'm almost sure though that the Dublin or the Dublin bus with company who makes the buses called Avian or kind of name I'm almost sure they, they are actually German so I'm not a, I'm not 100% sure but I'm pretty sure I couldn't be sure then seeing the trams so adorable and Friedberg and Hanover but it's actually lovely to see it uh, the way he was going up the mount or the mountains and everything and just so spectacular you know like I said you'd have to see for yourself on TV even let alone in reality but anyway I'm gonna leave it at that after 20 minutes talking <laughs> after so I'm gonna leave you and love you and I'll speak to you all tomorrow when I might have been in news regarding Asian oil tonight which is I'm recording this on the 21st, but whatever. So I'll speak to you all soon. Jabel. Bram. Thank you. Oh, boy. Yep, he loves y'all. So look at the alright? Jabel.